Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, at the request of a few of you who have been asking for some more uh, Google BigQuery focused content, uh, I have a video for you on exactly that. Uh, a just kind of example DAG going through a few different ways that you can interact with BigQuery, uploading files to it, taking files out of it, uh, uploading from GCS buckets, local file storage, um, so that you can know how to manage your BigQuery operations with Airflow and then integrate them into the rest of your data pipelines. Um, so this video will just be going through some of the basics of how to interact with BigQuery. All you'll need is a BigQuery uh, database to actually interact with, and then also have the Astro CLI installed as that's how I'll be running Airflow locally. Um, but a lot of the concepts will be the same no matter how you're running Airflow locally, just want to always say, hey, this is how I'm running uh, on my machine. And so if we go and open up good old VS Code here, you'll see I have a repo uh, that I have just set up here. Um, and so if I go, you'll notice it's called Google Examples because I'm probably going to have a few more examples around you know, how to create Google Docs with an Airflow. Um, and so here, all you need to do is start a new repo, just astro dev init. Um, and then in the requirements file, you're going to want to add uh, your Apache Airflow Providers Google, and then whatever the latest version is. Uh, so I'm using 10.13, but whatever the latest version is at uh, your the time you watch this video, use that. And then if you want to pip install it, uh, to, if you're running Airflow, you know, on a VM or however you're doing it, you can just pip install it instead of adding it to the requirements text because that's just how Astro works. Um, so here, I'm just going to save it here. And then now that I have added the uh, necessary requirements, it's going to go into my DAGs folder and create a new DAG called uh, Google BigQuery.py. Um, then within this DAG folder, I'm going to start off by just importing a series of different packages. So some of these are just kind of, you know, operations that you know, I want to use within Airflow, but most of it, as you can see, is different Google uh, Cloud operations. So future annotations, OS, date time, path lib, these are just uh, kind of utilities for interacting with the local file system, pulling out variables um, from the environment variables using OS. And then we have uh, good old Airflow DAG models. So that's essential for any uh, Airflow DAG. And then you'll see here from the BigQuery operators, having a create empty data set operator, create external table, uh, and then delete data set operator, as well as um, using some GCS create bucket operators, Google Cloud Storage delete bucket operator, and then a local file system to GCS operator. So I can just kind of show you the whole pipeline of, hey, I want to bring something from my local machine into a GCS bucket and then bring it from there into a BigQuery database, um, which is, you know, very typical workflow. Uh, also going to add trigger rule just so I can use Airflow trigger rules to kind of have some variation in how I schedule my different tasks. Um, then I'm going to initialize two IDs, my environment ID and a DAG ID. Uh, so environment ID, this is just pulling from a backend environment variable um, that is my systems test environment ID. Uh, this is how I'm going to actually just pull in my local uh, Docker environment ID. And that just is basically a unique identifier that will allow me to have just an easily unique variable at every time I run uh, this DAG on a different machine. Um, and then just DAG ID, so I can append this into a few other things. Um, so you'll see here, using the DAG ID for my data set name, my example uh, GCS bucket name, uh, then the object path. This is just a, a BigQuery available US state CSV, so just using publicly accessible data, so you don't have to you know bother getting any kind of other data here. And then CS file local path, just reading in my local path at runtime of my uh, parent directory, and then adding uh, the resources in US states CSV there as well. So once that's all set up, I have a you know unique data set name, a unique GCS bucket name. I can start creating my DAG and actually interacting with BigQuery. Um, so here, going to say, hey, with DAG, DAG ID, schedule one, start date, just typical DAG stuff. Um, I'm first going to create a bucket. Um, and so the reason why I'm doing this is, to my knowledge, you can't upload directly into BigQuery from your local file system. So that's why we're using this GCS bucket as kind of an intermediary here as a staging area for when actually bringing in a BigQuery. I know you can via the uh, UI, but obviously when you're setting up a data pipeline, your number one probably not going to be importing from your local file system. So it's better to know, hey, how do I connect this to a GCS bucket and more analogous to a real world scenario? Uh, and then also just, you know, it, it, programmatically, it makes more sense. Then after we're done with that, we have our first BigQuery operator where we're going to create a data set. So here, 
we're going to create a data set based on that data set name that we just set up here. Um, so BigQuery, create data, empty data set operator, just create an empty storage location for this US state CSV here. And then we're going to upload our file uh, from our local file machine to our GCS operator. So here, local files from GCS, CSV local file path, data sample, GCS object name, and then the data sample GCS bucket name. Again, these are just the names that we created dynamically based off of the DAG ID and environment ID. Then after we are done with that, we are not going to type S, we are actually going to create an external table here. So here, we're going to use the BigQuery create external table operator. Um, where we have a task ID of create external table, uh, destination project data set name, just again, appending in that data set name, that's why we set it up there, um, dot external table. Then we're setting our bucket that we're uploading from as this uh, data sample, or, or setting our external table as the GCS bucket, uh, setting our source objects as that GCS object name, so referring to uh, that US state CSV, and then defining our schema fields as name, uh, Amp name, string, mode required, and then salary nullable. Uh, so this is just salary data by US state. So that's why you can uh, have the integer and also a uh, critical name as a string. So we have our external table um, as basically our staging area uh, from our GCS bucket. And then what we'll do is have a delete data set. And what this will do is create a table based off of that GCS file path, bringing it into GCS and then creating a table with that information. Um, so really simple um, in terms of, you know, what we actually need to do here. It's nice that, you know, you don't have to create two separate tasks here to both define that stage and actually upload it um, into your uh, data set, like some other uh, databases you would need to do that. Um, and you just define your data set table name, define what bucket you're pulling from, the object within that bucket that you want to actually use, and then you know whatever information you want to define that schema as here. So you have that kind of flexibility. Then we also, just because I'm kind of creating this as an item potent uh, individual uh, run, uh, I'm not actually going to copy that twice, I'm going to use the BigQuery delete data set operator. So here, just deleting that data set that I just created, again, using that data set ID, deleting those contents, trigger rule, all done. So this is why I bought in the trigger rule here is to say, hey, this is only going to be triggered if all those previous uh, uh, tasks are actually successful, um, which just avoids kind of the case of, hey, this gets deleted before, you know, my data is actually uploaded to it. Um, or, you know, you can see here where I'm creating that empty data set there that I'm actually uploading into. Don't want this to delete it if I haven't actually uploaded any data into it. So you would kind of like the ghost artifact there. And then after that, I'm just going to also delete the bucket um, that I used again, just because I'm creating it within here as well. So I just want this whole thing to spin up and then spin down. Obviously, if you want to leave any of these assets up, don't add these delete bucket and then the delete data set uh, operations here. You can just, you know, kind of leave it as is. Um, and then what we'll do is just use uh, some bitmapping here to actually set it up. So here we are going to actually just use kind of bracketed bitmapping here, close that out, uh, where we have create bucket, create data set um, as just an array of different tasks, uploading into upload file and creating an external table, then deleting the data set and deleting the bucket. Um, and that should be all we need to do. So we'll have a little bit of dynamism here, not just a straight linear graph, because we want to create the bucket and data set in parallel. Uh, so now we've done that, I'm going to Astro Dev start my environment, um, and then I'll meet you over in the Airflow UI. So now that we're within the Airflow UI, you might've noticed I didn't define any connection within there because I'm just going to define it as a uh, generic Google Cloud connection, um, Google Cloud, default. And then what this will do is all my tasks will automatically use my Google Cloud connection. Um, I already have this defined in the environment variables, but I just want to show you guys how this kind of works here. Um, so that you can define it via the UI. So there's a bunch of different ways you can define, um, you know, how you're actually uh, connecting to Google to your Google connection. So I'm not choosing a service account. So what you'll want to do here is just go down to your impersonation chain. And you can either do this in a JSON format or URI format where you put in all of your different uh, connections. So your scope, what a project you're running it in, uh, your key path if you're using key JSONs, um, and obviously your connection type here. 
So you, the, what you actually want to the connection UI if you're doing it this way and not just running the export command is just uh, add this JSON um, here that has all your different connection variables in there. Um, and then again, you can also do that as a URI, but I find URI incredibly hard to work with. So I always just use the JSON format. Um, then once you're done, you can go over to your BigQuery operations tag that you've got created here, and you can see your different operations clicking through here, creating the data set, uploading the file to a bucket, creating extra tables, deleting the data set, and then deleting the bucket. Um, and you can see here, you know, where those trigger rules come in handy as well. Um, so I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the content um, and give me any other ideas for things you'd want to see me do with BigQuery uh, now that I have access to it. Uh, so bubble else though, have a good rest of your day. Data guy out.